Hey guys, EBP Man here. Now in today's video, we're gonna take a look at one of the fastest printers that we received from Creality. This is the Ender 5S1 that has print speeds of 250 millimeters per second and acceleration of 2000. This is gonna cut your prints <laughs> almost in half. I've seen prints that would typically take eight hours cut down to four. And what's best about this printer is that it still retains the quality. So let's talk about the specs. We're taking a look at 220 by 220 by 280 from the print bed perspective. Automatic bed leveling and manual leveling as well. A PC spring sheet uh, that I'd recommend immediately just switch it for PAI because this thing is, is great, but it's super sticky and it's really hard to take off print. So definitely would go with um, an upgrade there. 300C nozzle with 100C on the bed. And that 300C nozzle temperature is going to give you the ability to print some really interesting materials as you'll see in a second. The acceleration and print pretty spectacular 250 millimeters per second with an acceleration of 2000 and it does feature a sprite direct drive extruder four millimeter print nozzle ultra quiet but i'll tell you as it's printing fast it starts whizzing so you're going to hear it go but it's not terribly loud we're also talking about pla abs tpu petg pc asa and hips so you're going to have a lot of flexibility and this thing is designed where you can actually put an acrylic enclosure around it to even make it work with these materials that we're talking about here filament runout sensor power recovery and then also it also supports the new creality pad that has kipler on it that's going to give you even more flexibility the touch screen that it has it's going to work great but if you want to get that extra flexibility you'll want to check out the pad as well so let's check it out we'll see the print quality and then i tell you this is a printer to pick up because it's so fast and the quality is great too let's go and check it out all right guys so let's go ahead and take a closer look at the ender 5s1 and this has some really great features uh, first of all one of the things that stands out the most about this printer is that this is one of the fastest printers that creality has made uh, in this lineup, right? So for the Ender 5 uh, series and even some of the other ones that we've looked at for that matter. So you're looking at 250 millimeters per second print speed. Now, it does have this uh, stable cube frame that you're seeing right here, and it has direct drive extrusion uh, with 300C printing, which means that you're gonna be able to print in a whole host of variety of uh, materials, right? All the way up to ABS. Um, in addition to that, you have a CR touch. So this is gonna be something that's really simple for you to use. Now, the actual print drive that you're looking at, or, or the print head, that is a Sprite Direct uh, Drive Extruder, right? And as I mentioned, you're gonna be able to go up to 300C. That's gonna give you, again, PLA, uh, PETG, ABS, uh, again, being able to support a lot of different materials. Now, a couple things that we'll highlight with us is that this printer, because of the speed that it has, and if you think about uh, one of these guys right here, which is a traditional Benchy, uh, they claim that they're able to print a Benchy at 255 uh, millimeters per second in 35 minutes. Now we'll see what my tests have yield to give you a sense of what you can expect. Uh, but that is pretty fast performance. And we did a lot of different tests so that you could get a sense of the type of material that we used. Uh, we were using uh, this uh, PLA right here. Let me just rotate it for us. Uh, right here is what we, we tested with. So this is one of the ones. And then we also have the Creality PLA, which you're gonna see in a couple seconds. Now. The thing about this is that the Z-axis, you have 12 millimeters linear shafts. You have two of these and you're gonna see them in the back. You have a cantilever as well. You have um, also some support on the frame. And then you have a die spring silicon bed mount, right? So this is the one cool thing I like about these as well is that you don't really have any springs anymore. Uh, so that makes it really um, a more stable. Matter of fact, many of the uh, Creality printers that I have, I've replaced this already. So. The nice thing also about this is that you really have that brand new uh, Sprite extruder, right? So this is going to give you a lot of uh, options when it comes to printing, this guy right here. And it also is going to support flexible filament. But I'll warn you straight up. One of the things that I found is that while I can get fast speeds, the fast speeds are really in the PLA space. TPU, you're not gonna get those uh, really, really fast speeds. Now, one other thing to highlight is that this design really affords you the ability to have a, uh, acrylic, uh, an acrylic enclosure. Uh, and that acrylic enclosure is going to give you the ability to, once again, print those um, high heat materials like uh, heat resistance ABS. And uh, you can't expect that the Sonic Pad and some of the other accessories that come from Creality are gonna be available. 
Now, one thing that I want to highlight, so it does come with a flex bed, right? And this flex plate, you're looking at 220, 220, right? With a height of 280. The one thing I would recommend, and I'm just going to show you right here, and I've seen this on a lot of the reviews on this, you'll notice how it's wearing pretty fast. That's because things stick to this guy. This thing is super sticky. Uh, no matter all the calibration I was doing, uh, I was having a hard time keeping things off of the printer. So what I ended up doing is just taking a PEI sheet that I had and putting it here. It's not quite the right size, so I've ordered one that would be the right size, but it was something that made a big difference in my prints, and I'm going to share with that with you in a couple seconds. Now, this is a, a relatively quiet printer, but when you're going on those print speeds, right, those print speeds are... Uh, 250 millimeters per second, you actually start hearing a whistling, especially because the acceleration is of 2,000 millimeters per second. So as you start thinking about all those speeds, uh, you do start hearing some noise just because of the fear or the sheer movement of the actual printer. Now on the side of the printer here, I want to highlight a couple things. You do have here the uh, Creality filament, which is what we've been testing on. This is just the matte gray. You have a uh, filament sensor here. It does have power recovery as you would expect. And then you have a Bowden tube that's going into the actual Sprite uh, direct drive extruder that you have here. On the back, you'll get a sense of the, again, support system, very, very stable. Uh, because the actual bed is not moving and it's really just the print head that moves, you can get these uh, awesome speeds. Uh, it does have a, a sensor at the very bottom. And the one thing I wanted to highlight is the cable management. So it has really nice uh, cable organizer that keeps your wires nicely tucked away. Now each side of the printer um, has handles, which makes this really easy to lift and move. And you may be asking yourself, why would I need that? I have to tell you, owning several different printers, having handles comes in handy, especially as you're moving things around. So this is a definite plus. Now, one thing I'll highlight is the fact that I did uh, replace the uh, sheet that it had, the flex uh, sheet with the PEI one. I mentioned that this one just makes a difference when it prints and you'll see that in a couple seconds. Uh, things that this printer is missing, uh, onboard Wi-Fi, right? That's something that it does not have. Uh, and then it also doesn't have camera or it doesn't have any lights. Uh, and I haven't been able to see that there's any extras that you can get. Um, you can get that enclosure, uh, but that's as far as I saw. All right, so now let's start taking a look at the prints. And from a print perspective, this printer did really, really well. So this is the printer, uh, or, or one of the uh, prints from the Creality uh, pre-sliced Benchy, right? This is kind of like what you want to test with to see um, how it does with overhangs and overall print quality. And it did relatively well. There's some defects here in the bottom where you can see some squishing that's going on here. Uh, and we also printed this rabbit, and this is uh, their rabbit, and the rabbit came out really nice. No kind of fuzzies coming up in here. Uh, that first layer was really nice. All in all, this was a good print. We did run a second version of the rabbit, running it at 200% faster, and I didn't notice any change. Right, so the quality is still there. You can see what it looks like. Still the same size. Didn't see any fuzzies uh, or stringing happening up here, and that was pretty good. We also then ran some XY cubes. I noticed that at the very bottom of the XY cubes, and maybe you can see that here, there's some squishy stuff going on there. This is something that I could probably modify in the Curo profile just to fix this up, or it could be something that we need to modify with the printer. Uh, that was a normal. I did run one at, again, 200% faster. And how about these side by side? Um, you know what? I can't tell that there was a difference outside of the speed, which is a good thing. So let me get them aligned up. And again, normal speed, 200 times faster, uh, the slice profile. Um, and we were printing these at 250 millimeters per second. These uh, were doing really, really well. Um, I also then wanted to see how well it would do with complexity. And so here we have uh, this, again, chess piece. And you can see uh, the details that it has here and everything that's going on. And it, this came out really nice. Again, this is with that white PLA that you saw right there. Now, we then changed filaments. I wanted to see how well it did with other filaments. And I want to show you some of the things that I did right here. It's easier to write on this. So we'll start with this guy right here. This one, and I haven't been able to get their 35 minute bench yet, but this is was 50 minutes uh, to print, and you can see the quality of this. This is 250 millimeters per second. 
with I think an acceleration of 2000. I had an acceleration of 2000. You can see that there's some squishy stuff going on there, but all in all, this is a good print, especially for that speed, right? Real nice. Then I went ahead and I increased that by 200%. So we went 200% faster and it went down to 41 minutes. But then you can see how I started to get some defects. First layer looks good, but then I started seeing some defects in a couple areas um, with this print. So it was just checking out the speed. I did the core XY cubes, did the same thing, one at 250, and then the other one I increased 250%. And I'll put them side by side so you can see which one is which. Uh, this one was 250%. 200% uh, faster at 250, this was 250, and you notice I'm getting the squishy part right here, right? So need to calibrate that. I then wanted to print out a functional part to see how it would do, and this is uh, a angle uh, drill bit guide, and this is gonna help uh, with a project that I'm working on right now, and I printed this out, printed out really fast, and then you can see the detail that you see here. This is a model I found on Thingiverse, worked out really well. The next thing I did is, like I said, I want to slow it down and I switched the bed because it was really hard to pull things off. And that's why when you look at the bottom of these, it kind of looks a little weird, right? You can see how that material is left over. All of these that I pulled off have kind of like some residue of the flex plate. So now for this one right here, you can see this also has some residue, right? And you can see some of the uh, imprint of one of the previous prints. So I said, let me slow it down to 150 millimeters per second, leave the acceleration at 2000, and then see what would get. So this print is what I got. Now, let me show you the bottom layer. Look how beautiful that bottom layer is. Really, really nice. 150 millimeters per second. This thing completed in four minutes, four hours and 23 seconds. On a standard ender, right? This would have taken eight hours, eight hours. So even at 150 millimeters per second, with the 2000 uh, acceleration, which is what I left there, it still printed very fast. Now, take a look at the quality here. I just wanna show you that. This is what's so spectacular, right? 150 with 2000 or 2000 acceleration. Look how nice that is. I'm gonna rotate slowly and you can see that. Really good detail. And then you can look at how each one of these pieces came out. Right. This is also a model that we pulled out from Thingiverse. And then the other thing I noticed is that at the slower speed, even though I had the acceleration at the right speed, look at no squishy parts. This came out really, really nice. Now, for those of you curious uh, what the menu system looks like, pretty standard menu. So here you have all your controls as you're printing. You can modify any of these as you go. You can go into the prepare area. And when you go in here, you have your home, you have your Z. You also have uh, to be able to change your filament. You have your temperature preheating in your settings area. You can set what your pre-settings are all the way up to ABS. You have your leveling, which is gonna be your manual leveling first and then followed by auto leveling second. And then you also then have um, your print, right? Where you can grab things. Remember, you could use the, uh, the pad with this, which is gonna get you, again, even more control of your printer. And, and that's gonna also give you Wi-Fi capabilities as well. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.